Tonight I'm comparing a DIY plywood router sled to a linear bearing router sled to help you make the decision about which one works best for you. A few years ago I made a router sled out of plywood and I used it to flatten a couple slabs. It had some quirks, but it got the job done. In the last year or two, a friend of mine developed a few different designs for router sleds using linear bearings. He gave me one of his designs to try out, so I'm going to compare it to my DIY version. The setup on my DIY sled was pretty simple. I just used two MDF trim boards as guide rails and clamped them square to the table. The sled then sits on top of those rails and slides back and forth while the router slides within the sled. As long as your indexing surfaces are clean and smooth, the final product should come out nice and flat. There are some issues though. Sometimes when you're sliding the router in the sled, you can get some vibration and chatter in the cut if it doesn't slide super smooth. It can also be a bit tough to move the sled for each pass depending on how heavy your router is. The cuts are usually across the grain because your sled length is limited. This is usually fine, but it can cause small tears in the grain and be harder to sand out. The biggest challenge, however, is dust collection. The DIY router sled has no dust collection, so when I flatten a slab, it makes a huge mess and covers everything in my shop with chips and dust. It's not a perfect solution, but the DIY router sled does get the job done. Now, before I get into the linear bearing sled, I want to talk a little bit about selecting your slab. Whenever you decide to flatten a slab or a board, the most important thing to think about is moisture content. Most slabs start out nice and flat at the beginning when they're cut, but over time as they dry, they can do some wacky things. There's one slab in my shop that's actually gotten more and more crazy over time, which actually sounds like a few people I know. If you have any idea what I should do with this slab, let me know in the comments. If you want to measure moisture content, there are two different types of moisture meters. One kind has pins that you stick into the side of the wood, and the other kind is pinless and just sits on top of the wood. The pinned meters measure the resistance between those two pins. Now the problem with this is that you can only measure the moisture as deep as those pins go into the wood. It also leaves two pinholes in the board that you're going to be working with. The pinless kind works by creating an electromagnetic field underneath the sensor plate, and then it measures capacitance and converts into a moisture content number. These meters can measure deeper into the wood, sometimes up to even three quarters of an inch deep. A company named Wagner Meters reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try out their professional grade moisture meter. So I decided to compare this with my cheap Amazon one that I got to see how the readings compare. So what we're going to do is measure the moisture content in a few different slabs that I'm going to mill today and then we're going to compare that to some wood that I've had sitting under cover but outside for a while. This first black walnut slab has been drying in my shop for a few years and it looks like the moisture content is right around 10%. This is a black walnut burl that I've had in here for a few years and it's even more dry at about 9%. For the third slab, I have to change the specific gravity. This is American Elm, which is 0.5. The moisture content on this slab is higher at around 12 to 13%. For my shop climate, anything under 15% is stable and ready to work. Now, just for fun, we're gonna go out into the backyard now and we're gonna measure some other lumber that I've had sitting out here drying. I've got some tongue and groove pine over here that's been undercover but it's been outside exposed to the elements. This pine is up around 17%, so it probably should dry out a bit more before I start working on it. These other blocks have been out in the rain, so they're more in the 20 to 30% range. When you compare the two meters on the same board, there's clearly a difference of anywhere from five to 10%, which may have something to do with the depth of the measurement or just the quality of the sensor. A moisture meter is one place where you definitely get what you pay for. The cheaper meter might be good for figuring out ballpark numbers or trying to figure out if the wood's really wet. It could be good for comparing two boards to see if one is wetter than the other, but it's clearly not great for accuracy. This Wagner meter is really a professional tool and is in a whole different class from my cheap one. If you're interested, I have links down below in the description. So my friend Josh developed this linear bearing router sled design. And the first thing I noticed was the setup on this was much more complex than my DIY sled setup. There were a lot of fasteners, bolts, and bearings, but once I got it all set up, it was smooth as butter. One thing to note on linear bearing sleds is you really have to make sure that your sides are flat and parallel to prevent any binding in the bearings. It helps if you roll your sled back and forth with one rail attached and the other rail free so that you can figure out exactly where they're both parallel. Now it's time to flatten some slabs. Mm -hmm. 
this slab, I'm going to flatten one side with the DIY router sled and the other side with the linear bearing router sled so I can do a good comparison on the same board, same type of wood, and just to remove other variables, I'm also using the same router and the same bit in both setups. Okay, so I have both sides here, and when I feel the surface, the surface finish is actually very comparable. There's still gonna be sanding that I need to do on both sides of these, but they both got the job done. The router lines are far less visible on my linear bearing one because they're going with the grain. Overall though, I would say the finished product is no better on my DIY sled than the linear bearing sled. However, the biggest difference comes in the ease of use for the operator. The linear bearing sled can easily roll in any direction and is much more comfortable to use because you don't have to be holding the router the whole time. It has the built-in dust collection, which I realized is doing a significant amount of work reducing the amount of dust going into my shop. After flattening three slabs, I didn't have any sawdust on the floor and just some small piles on the tabletop. With my DIY sled though, it was everywhere after just one slab. Everything in my shop had at least a fine layer of dust on it, and some places had a few inches. Another benefit of this linear bearing sled is that it can get the router bit closer to the workpiece than the DIY sled because you can use the plexiglass base as the router base plate. The DIY one has a router base plate, but then you have the three quarter inch thickness of the plywood. So you can either bring the wood up to the bit or you have to use a router bit extension. My final verdict on this is that the real benefit of the linear bearing router sled is the ease of use for the person making the sawdust. If you have a really large slab or have a lot of flattening you need to do, the linear bearing sled is the way to go by far. It will definitely be worth the cost in the end and if you have a spot where you can keep it, then that makes it even easier. If, however, you are doing an occasional slab or a cutting board or something like that where you don't mind cleaning up the mess and it's okay being a little uncomfortable, then the DIY sled is probably the one for you. This is also the best option if you're trying to save money. If you're interested in getting one of these yourself, my friend's business is called Stuff to Make Stuff. And he has this design of router sled. He also has two other designs that are a really innovative way to raise and lower the rails if you're machining really thick stuff. I'll put links for all these router sleds in the description below, as well as links for the Wagner moisture meters. Make sure to check out my website to see any plans and merch that I have available there. Now, go build something and we'll see you next time.